Today we will use OpenPLC with Windows and the ASP8266 Wi-Fi chip. In this video we will cover how to blink an LED remotely. First off you have to install OpenPLC Editor for Windows. You go to the OpenPLC website and follow the install instructions. When installing OpenPLC make sure you accept all permissions Windows is asking for. After you are done we will install the firmware to the ASP8266. You go to the OpenPLC project and download the firmware and you make sure to unzip it. After that we open it with the Arduino IDE. If you don't already have the Arduino IDE, you should go to the Arduino website and download the latest version. After opening the Arduino IDE, you should first add the ESP8266 port. You do this by going to File, Preferences and add this link to the field. I will leave the link in the description below. After that go to Tools, Board and then Board Manager. In the search bar type in A266 and then select the only option. Now all ESP8266 boards are added to the Arduino IDE. After this is done you go to Tools, Board ASP8266 ports and select the Node MCU 1.0 port. This is one of the most common ESP8266 chips. I will also link the components I used in the description of this video. First, we will open the serial monitor and set the baud rate to the correct baud rate. We close it and then we make sure by tools, then we press upload and the script starts compiling. In a moment it starts uploading to the ESP chip and it's critical you have to uh, open the serial monitor port after it's done so you can click it and it will do nothing when it's uh, uploading but after it's 100% you have to spam the serial monitor button so it will open um, soon enough to see the IP address. After that's done, you copy the IP address of the ESP module that we're going to need for OpenPLC runtime. Now we'll make our electronic schematic. The chip barely fits on the board, so I already made some connections with some jumper wires. So pin D0 is connected to the orange wire. And on the other side, I make sure the green wire is connected to the G from ground. Press the chip in firmly and I'll connect the LED with pin D0. The long leg is the plus. And then we complete the circuit by connecting it to ground. To make it visual that the ESP module is wireless connected with OpenPLC, I connected the chip to a Bluetooth box as a power supply. So after we've done this, we're gonna open OpenPLC runtime. So this is a soft PLC running on your PC and you can interact with it by going to this web address. So I open a web browser and I already made the shortcuts to this address. So it's this address. Then the login are OpenPLC, OpenPLC. Here you can interact with OpenPLC runtime. You're gonna set a slave device. Then you click on add new device. We're gonna select device type ESP8266. We're gonna call it, it's a great name. And we're gonna paste our IP address from the Arduino serial monitor in it. So we save the device. You can see the output started with QX100.0. On this side, you also have this layout provided by OpenPLC. And here you can see the pin layout. So pin D0, we connect it to the LED, and that pin is corresponding with output percentage QX 100.0 so the end starts the first device starts with 100 so 
So this is my first device. So QX100.0. You can also see it here. It will start with QX100.0. Oh. So after we done this, we can go and write a program. So for that, we're going to need open PLC editor. We open it. And for a program, we're going to make timer that blinks every two seconds so we're gonna create a new project so new you have to make a new folder if you want to make a new project so i'm gonna new call this youtube and i will select the folder and a new program is generated so you can also give your program a name and then language we will using is FBD, that stands for Function Block Diagram. Click on OK. And then we come in the Edit area. First of all, I add a variable. And that will be the LED. The class is local and the type is base type bool. Because the LED is either 0 or 1. For location, I add location, percentage. QX 100.0 The point zero is also important, otherwise you're writing to an analog output for that loop. We can drag the LED variable in the program and we'll set it as an output. So there are a few ways to create a pulse timer of two seconds. I will create my own pulse timer with some timer blocks. We're going to use a timer on block. And what that does is you have an input and if the input is zero and a certain time on PT is passed, then the output will be one. So we're also gonna need a reset set block. So this block works if set is one, the output becomes one of this block. If it becomes zero, it still will be one. Only after you reset it, this becomes one the output will also be one if you uh, put both connections connect to a one so if both connections are one the reset will have uh, will dominate the set port in this case because it's rs we're gonna connect that we're gonna set the let when when the let is not on we're gonna set it so we need also a NOT port, you can find that by bit device, and then here a NOT. And you have to connect the blocks. And to set the time we add a variable, and we're gonna set a variable T, so PLC know it's a timer variable, hashtag. And then two seconds. Press OK. Connect. So let is not on. It's after two seconds. It will turn on. It will be set, and it has to reset. The same, but when it's when the let is on, after two seconds, it has to reset the let. So we can try this out by clicking on Start PLC Simulation over here. Then you have to wait a little bit and click on the Sun Glasses over here, Debug Instance. And then you can see the code uh, running. So you can see the LED is turned on and off every two seconds. If you're happy with it, you can press uh, stop simulation and you have to close the instance. Uh, please note that you have to close it because you can't change anything here. And then we're gonna generate a PLC program for it for open PLC runtime. So press the red arrow. And then we have an open PLC program we can run in uh, or open PLC runtime. So we give this a name. We save it and then we go back here we go to programs 
You have to log in again after a certain time. We go to programs. And then we're going to choose a file. It's in Dutch for me. This file and then YouTube. I'm going to open it. And I'm going to upload the file. We have to give it a name again. And we upload the program. This also takes a few seconds. You can already see we have a variable of the type bool, QX100.0. That's a good sign. And after completion is finished, we can go to the dashboard. And now we still have to start our PLC. So our slave device is set and our program is in the soft PLC. And now we have to start our uh, PLC that's running on the PC. So we start it up. And now the LED should be blinking. So please note that the ESP is a slave device. So you don't program the ESP, you program the soft PLC and the ESP is just an output input card for the software PLC. So you can also do different things. You have different outputs, you have four outputs, four inputs, so one, two, three, four. And you can also link buttons or um, sensors to it. You also have an analog input great for uh, potentiometers or temperature sensors or, and you also have an analog uh, output over here. So now you're able to start your own program. In the future I'm gonna do some projects about the ESPA266 and some other Arduino projects. So if you don't want to miss out on them, please consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any new videos.